Do not go gentle until that good night. Games. Games on PSP. Movie games for a talking trash can. <sighs> okay. It seems we've entered the nebula of PSP games specifically based on movie titles. That's okay. We'll just wait it out over here and we'll, we'll be back to Purple Brick Wall Paradise in no time. Oh god. Oh god, no. No. Please, no, not that one. No. No! It's taking me! I don't want to go! Oh shit, okay, here we are. Thank you for bringing me to this hellscape. It's Dragon Ball Evolution. Want to play a PSP game based on a terrible 2008 core live action anime adaption? Here it is! And they didn't just base this off the movie, no, they threw in the entire screenplay here. I am being bombarded by text box after text box. Interior, high school, day. Goku looks like the lead singer of a Christian rock band. Forget those long, drawn out fights from the cartoon. Boring. I want to see PNGs of these actors smacking against each other. Yo, what did you say to me, bro? I said you smell nice. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, you smell nice too. Yeah. 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 Call me by your name, bro. Call me by mine. Goku. Say it again. Goku. One more time. Goku. God, I love you, stupid 2005 looking ass fohawk. There's a lot of people watching. You know what? Let them watch. The game itself has these very potent Street Fighter to the movie, the game vibes to it, where it's like they took something that was as vibrant and colorful and brimming with character like Dragon Ball Z, and then they bludgeoned it into this abomination and then tried to mold that back into a game. So now you have whatever this Cronenberg creature of whatever this is supposed to be. My grandpa's dead. The gameplay here is very similar to those other Dragon Ball Arena fighter games, but is this good? I I can't really tell. I'm just mashing a bunch of buttons and it's working out for me, so I don't know. Whatever, I think it's safe to say uh, this is probably the best way to experience Dragon Ball Evolution. Sam, do you have a PSP? Yeah. That means you have a pretty small penis. But now, on a month, let's roll out. Oh shit, watch out. Next up, we got Michael Bay's Transformers The Game. Say what you will about that first movie, but every scene is like an orgy of explosions and metal and lasers and cars, and come on, you take a you take a vehicular combat game like Twisted Metal and a third-person shooter like Gears of War, and that should make for a decent Transformers game, right? Instead, we now have the spiritual successor to Big Riggs. Somehow, they made Transformers extremely bland and unexciting. This really feels like some student project that got thrown into a PSP. That's it! I'm blowing you to micro scraps, Bumblebee! Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. It's weird because you got a pretty big arsenal of weapons and transforming between big robot and car is pretty snappy, so it's like there could have been some enjoyment here playing as this big overpowered titan, but even when you're a Decepticon and your goal is to destroy the United States military base, you're still fighting the controls in this repetitive shootout fest. Oh, oh god, this is giving me a headache. That's it! I'm blowing you to micro scraps, Bumblebee! Bumblebee. Hey, yo, I think I got hit a little too hard. Rocky Balboa for PSP. This was meant to coincide with the sixth movie, and I'll tell you something right now, I really wanted this as a kid. I was a huge Rocky fan, and I remember just the Wikipedia page just staring at it like, yeah, this is gonna be awesome. But when it came out, I could not find it, so that tells you something when this game comes out and it's not anywhere, something's up. But finally playing it all these years later, I gotta say, this was everything I wanted it to be. No pussyfooting around, you were just fighting through every match in the entire Rocky franchise. That's all I wanted. Like your first match is against Spider Rico. Who? You know, Spider, the guy Rocky fights for like a 20 second scene in the beginning of the first movie, that's who. It makes you wonder, like, what's his story? Does Spider have his own Adrian sitting on the sidelines rooting for him? Is it that guy? I love you, Spider. Here you get to rewrite history and beat Apollo Creed as Rocky in Rocky 1 like Rocky did in Rocky 2. And then you get to beat Apollo Creed in Rocky 2 like Rocky did in Rocky 2. It's just like the movie and it's also not. 
You want some Rocky IV revenge porn for Apollo? Here it is. If Trago dies, he dies. The controls here feel pretty responsive and nice. They kind of feel like a simplified version of something like the Fight Night games. It's just studying the opponent, learning their moves, and using these power punch combos to get a good opening and wail on them. And when you pull it off, the punches here feel so satisfying. They got this nice heavy presence to them. My only real issue is these matches take forever, even when you're absolutely dominating. I'm just knocking Spider Rico down over and over again. He just keeps getting up. I can do this all day. Never mind. I want a divorce. It gets really exhausting in these later fights, and I tell you, I almost lost my mind when all the footage I recorded got corrupted, and I had to do all these fights over again. One fight can easily last an actual 15 minutes. There is a lot at stake here when you lose. Especially when you get knocked down and the mechanic to pull yourself back up on your feet straight up doesn't work. This meter right here is lying to you. Do not even look at it. Even the in-game tutorial doesn't teach you this, but the main goal is to like line up the splitting images you see on the ref. That's what you need to be looking for. If you try to use this meter, you're gonna overshoot it, and you're gonna have to endure these long fights over again. This poor guy on Game Packs 11 years ago that nobody answered, I hope you see this one day. I'm so sorry. It can be a bit monotonous at times, but it's still a decently fun game. I just don't recommend playing it for long stretches unless your thumbs can take the hits and keep moving forward. Speaking of, you can also play as old Rocky versus young Rocky in this looper type setup. I love how the announcers are just like, yep, this is happening. Rocky Balboa and Rocky Balboa. I didn't hear no bell. No, I didn't hear no bell. No, I didn't hear no Yo, bell. No, I didn't hear no, no I didn't hear no bell. I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> When the movie Avatar first debuted in theaters, there were reports of fans experiencing severe depression over their inability to visit the film's dazzling fantasy planet. Now, seven years later, there's finally a cure for the Avatar blues. Avatar on PSP. <laughs> the otherworldly land of Pandora. <laughs> From the sci-fi blockbuster Avatar, is now becoming a reality. You can go right under that, that uh, one central floating mountain there and feel its mass right. above you. And that's when you really know you're on an alien world. Look, I don't know why, but I really thought this one might at least be average with some fun moments here and there, but this, <laughs> this sucks. I get that the movie gets a lot of flack for its story being derivative, but come on, look at these set pieces. You got mechs, choppers fighting dragons, and the game just strips away all that. This is definitely a PSP movie game from 2009. It's just chocked full of the same quick time events over and over. And what's worse is unlike the other versions of this game, you're stuck to playing as the Na'vi. So all you get is a boring staff and bow and arrow, all the enemies to get all the cool stuff. Your aim doesn't matter. The arrow will always strike right in the midsection. You always have to do everything the specific way the game wants you to. You can't even really like avoid stealth because you can't aim while taking damage, meaning you have to slowly trudge through these stealth sections in these escort missions. There's nothing here to spice these things up. Not even a hot coffee mod mini game where you get to connect ponytails with your 10 foot tall bad blue bitch that comes on screen the same second your dad decides to wake up from his 90 minute nap in the movie theater right before he says, just what kind of movie did you drag me into? Look, if I'm getting a game where you play as a blue person, it better be a real man's game. Like Mega Mind, the Blue Defender. Yes, we're finally here. It's that other PSP game about a bruised testicle. They say one designer spent an agonizing four years programming Mega Mind's cape. This one acts more as a Ratchet and Clank esque game where you get an array of cartoonish weapons to eradicate a bunch of construction workers and smack them around with your pimp stick. I'm honestly kind of surprised this even exists. This one came out in 2010, and by then I remember feeling like the PSP was already kind of out of most people's minds. But not their Mega Minds, baby. What also kind of find odd about this relatively later PSP release is DreamWorks kind of typically glossed over the PSP. Yeah, they did release those Shrek games and the Over the Hedge Hammy Goes Nuts game we talked about, but they skipped over everything else. We never got a PSP port of How to Train Your Dragon, Madagascar, Monsters vs. Aliens, not even B-Movie. Why we didn't get those games on PSP will just be another one of those great gaming but why those. Just like why the fuck did they make a game called Madagascar Carts and not just call it Madagascar Carts. But we randomly got Megamind and it's, it's decent. It's a very inoffensive movie tie-in game where you're shooting through wave after wave of enemy until your kid's brain goes so numb they won't have the energy to scream and piss all over Payless while you're trying to check out. You unlock some cooler and sillier weapons as you progress, like this electric whip or one that just causes a bunch of inflation porn, but for so much of the beginning of the game, you're stuck with the same boring pistol and it just makes things very monotonous. You know what a game like this really needs? It is some gore.
This is 300, March to Glory. One thing that was cool about the PSP earlier in its life is that it would get these random licensed exclusives, sometimes just for like the hell of it. And you know what? This one's awesome. Sure, the smarter move probably would have been to make a Nintendogs type game where you lather baby oil all over Gerard Butler until he falls in love with you, but this hack and slash will have to do instead. And a damn pretty good one was made here. You got a nice blend of combos and attacks with your weapons, and you can even chill bash in slow motion, just like the movie. You can throw your shield Captain America style and decapitate enemies, and every now and then a sea of arrows will start raining down, so be ready. Spear throwing, that's a good trick. There's some interesting ideas here to mix things up too, like these failing sequences where you control a bunch of bundled up beefcakes to advance and take on this Mondo elephant. It's just like that one Muscle March game for the Wii, except it, it's just a little bit bloodier. This one's pretty good, check this one out. What other violent movie games do we got on PSP? Let's see, ooh, they made a game based off of your dad's favorite flea market beach towel, it's Scarface. Money, power, respect. Immediately what comes to mind when you think of this movie is extreme violence, blood, parades of gunfire, copious amounts of cocaine, getting chainsawed to death in a bathtub, bodies getting hanged from a helicopter, so much violence, this is gonna make for a brutal game. Okay, Tony, let me show you the basics of running my operation. If you don't know, as far as this map shows which turfs are controlled by each of the cars, you can use the analog stick or directional buttons to move around and look at how many But keep in mind that if another cartel takes over one of our storehouses, and it's full of round begins with a fire. Yep. This is Scarface and PSP. It's just this. I shit you not. What you're looking at right now is pretty much the whole game. It's like some some joke. I mean, it was no secret. Scarface would make for a good game. The essence of it's all there. Just go play Vice City Stories, because I have no clue what this is supposed to be. The original Scarface game released on PS2, Xbox, and Wii and was more akin to what you'd expect, an open-world Grand Theft Auto-type experience. Perhaps a PSP port would be too ambitious, but typically when console games were ported here, they typically did well to match it, and when they couldn't, usually you'd see a game that at least tried to resemble the original. Here they just said, fuck it, here's a map. It's basically a strategy game where you have to take over different territories, peddle drugs, hire thugs, and build your drug empire. No dishwasher minigame, no shooting sections, nothing. You do get these sequences whenever you try to take over a territory that offers some strategy, but it's all pretty automated. This is the closest thing to actual gameplay you get. It's not bad, but it is really underwhelming that a Scarface game is not much more than a little interactive interface. It's more of a virtual board game when there was the potential for so much more. I love how this game basically worships the movie. Between levels, you get these like 10 minute long clips and then the loading screen has quotes from the movie with their timestamp as if they're quoting the Bible itself. Honestly, all this did was make me want to get Scarface the actual movie for PSP, which no bro- Oh my goodness! Okay, so apparently Scarface the movie for PSP is worth a thousand dollars. Okay, that's great, I'll just stick to watching uh, the scenes on here. You know, come to think of it, it's kind of funny that you have these UMD movies for PSP and these game adaptions being sold at the same time. Like, you'd think there had to be a clueless schmuck or two out there that thought, holy shit, finally click the video game. What's up everybody, today we're speedrunning super bad for PSP, no tool assist. I'm aiming to beat my last PB, uh, let's do this. Okay, first, as soon as McLovin shows up in Home Ec, you're gonna wanna hold down on the D-pad and R for, uh, three seconds. This exploit is actually gonna trick the game into thinking you already have McLovin's fake in your inventory, glitching you straight to the convenience store. And not only that, the robber that's supposed to show up, what happens is he's not gonna fully load in, but right when the 3D model of his fist connects on the eighth frame, press triangle. What this does, in turn, is cause Jonah Hill's hitbox to extend past the boundaries of the level where the NPCs are all secretly loaded into, which will cause the game to register the period dance scene early. Now I'm gonna be showing you how you can actually headbutt Emma Stone straight into the end credits. Next up, while I do not support this movie's horrific display of trash can violence, we have The Godfather on PSP. Now you're probably wondering why the heck there are so many PSP games based on your dad's VHS collection. Well, in the 2000s, there was this phenomenon where a bunch of classic movies started getting these video game renditions. You see, it would have been sacrilegious to try to remake these movies, even though some of them are already remakes. So, what better way to keep these properties making money than to make them interactive so your type 2 diabetic uncle could finally live out his dreams of being Tony Montana thanks to the Wiimote waggle. So that's where we get the godfather of PSP games, Godfather Mob Wars. 
Now, I haven't seen Godfather, but I have seen a god thumb, so I know a thing or two around my, my way around the block, and so far, so good. It's more of an abridged version of the console game, and I'm pretty impressed. You'll be bashing the heads of jabronis, the third-person shooter combat works great, and you can take cover and shoot off kneecaps and shoulders with these awesome ragdoll physics. It's really astonishing to see a 2006 PSP game pull this off so well. So, you got this nice handheld third-person shooter slash brawler, but the problem is a lot of the gameplay feels scattered and disjointed. There's so much meandering that doesn't make sense here. The console version was an open-world game with driving mechanics. Here, that open world is now gone. You're playing in close-off sections and you're always on foot, but you still do these objectives like extorting businesses and bribing cops. This works in the open world, but when it's done these linear levels, there's no real point to this. It just feels like you're wasting time before getting to the good stuff, but bam! Hold on, the game's not letting me get to the next level. I have to do this thing called Mob Wars? No. No, 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 no. Time to take over New York City for the Corleones, one neighborhood at a time. In mob wars, money is used to recruit Raise mobsters and play cards. Strengthen your own territory. You okay, you territory. Let me show you the basics of running my operation. Yeah, but this is another take over the territory strategy game shoehorned in. Don't worry, thank god, it's optional, and what's good is you do get actual direct control of the gameplay. But it's even more disjointed than the story mode, you're just doing random objectives when you take over each territory. This kind of stuff's just, just not for me. This is a pretty decently impressive downsized game for PSP, especially for being a more early title. I can forgive it for being a bit more compromised and rush, like there's no hip fire whatsoever, this dude's shooting bullets right at the ground. Okay, time for some real cold-blooded killing. Here we have Alien vs Predator Requiem. Look, I know the movie's doo-doo, but playing these two species, like, it, it's gotta have some fun moments in it. Please? Eh, this one's also just kind of baffingly bland. You don't even get to play as a xenomorph, you are strictly playing as the Predator going through these very confined levels to sneak past humans and kill aliens. There's just really so little here to mix things up, you're just trudging along looking like the beef jerky Sasquatch trying not to step on its own spicy beef poop. You'd think with an arsenal as wide as the Predator, this would feel more fun and engaging, but it's super stiff and way too easy. But as you progress, the Predator will eventually face his greatest challenge yet. Surviving high school. Interior. High school. Day. Someone wrote on the bathroom wall that Predator smells bad. And I overheard Ashley tell the other girls that I'm what they call a duff, which I found out online means designated ugly fat friend. So after chew practice, I confronted Ashley about it. I kinda killed her, but didn't make me feel any better. I just wanna go home. It's like sometimes I wish I could be... ...invisible. Speaking of invisible, faithful viewer, does any part of your brain still remember that fever dream you had called Arthur and the Invisibles? Oh, you don't remember this movie? It was part of that weird time in the mid-2000s where we realized cheaper 3D animated movies could be made by studios that aren't called Pixar or DreamWorks. Like, of course you remember Dougal. We've been through this. Arthur and the Invisibles was a blend of live action and 3D, though, a lot like James and the Giant Peach was with stop motion. You got Charlie Bucket crawling into a world with a bunch of super tiny folks called the Minimoys as they get swept into a big adventure fueled by copious amounts of cocaine. This little family movie was directed by Luc Besson, the same guy that made this. <laughs> I mean, he's known for his weird style, and uh, he also probably likes little girls, so he's a nasty dude. And apparently he made this weird ass movie and now I'm playing a PSP game about it. And guess what? Only the PSP version of this game was cancelled in America. It came out on everything else, but for some reason, the French said no. You filthy Americans are not playing this game on the PSP, no way. So here we are, what did we miss out on? What's this Arthur game on PSP all about? Well, instead of me explaining it, why don't I just let this 100% real promo made for the movie explain it? Just, just hear how hyped this lady is for this game. There's also an Arthur and the Invisibles video game based on the film where each character, Arthur, Selenia, and Betamesh, has their own special powers for players to act out in their own heroic missions. This is basically your typical kids movie tie-in game being a mix of a platformer and brawler and I gotta say it looks pretty damn good on the PSP. There's a neat charm to this style, it's got a lot of those Jack and Daxter precursor legacy vibes to it. 
Unfortunately, this is one of those kids games that assumes you've never touched a video game in your life before. Listen carefully. To move around, use the main direction control. Be very careful. There's a big, very, very deep hole underneath. If you fall in, the adventure will be over. control the camera, hold the special action button, and use the main direction control. These green bars in the interface. One is missing. Oh, it's nothing. It's just... Can you believe it? Wait, I, I know that voice. That's the voice of, of Binky from Arthur. Wait a minute. Did they... Did he, did he get tricked into doing this game thinking it had something to do with like an actual Arthur game? No way, they, they did, they totally scammed him. <laughs> Here you're controlling three characters with basic advantages like Binky Barnes has projectiles he can throw and Arthur's licorice pizza love interest has more powerful melee attacks. When the game does leave you to its own devices to solve puzzles, it's a surprisingly well-made movie game. I'm just not sure why the PSP version specifically was cancelled here in America. In fact, there's a lot of weird shit that went on with getting this movie localized here in the States, and I'm not talking about the fact that they pulled the Philosopher's Stone and changed the title for our puny American brains. Basically, the original French cut of Arthur and the mini Moys received a ton of changes in America. Like, they cut any reference to any romance between the two main characters because, um, this kid's like 10. Also, they cut Snoop Dogg's character smoking a fat blunt. You know who made these changes? The Weinsteins. Harvey Weinstein thought this was too nasty. That's how you know something really sick was going on here. This one works with two. Do you want to try? Go on, you do the honors. I'll be right behind you. Oh no! Just what kind of movie did you drag me into? Luke Besson, you sack of shit. Did you know gaming this movie was also part of a trilogy? What? <laughs> this last one, it's its not a movie, but it, it, it keeps me up. Um, it's uh, something called Geronimo Stilton. I got this rat, this annoying, key-eating fucking rat. Stilton, right? He's part of this popular series of children's books in, in Europe, and I never heard of him here before in the States. And uh, guess what? He got not one, but two PSP games released. Guess when? 2013. Guess where? <laughs> Digitally! On the PSP store! Now, I need to know who. Who bought this game? What kind of kid would steal their parents' credit card information to buy a Geronimo Stilton game on PSP in 2013? What, what, what responsible, well-informed parent would be conscious of the fact that a Geronimo Stilton game was released on a digital storefront on their kid's little video game gizmo you just keep calling a Game Boy? Tell me. Who? Who? What sick fuck bought a children's game released on PSP in 2013? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Faithful viewer, help me. Help me. Help me.